Hello everyone, it's Tuesday. Today is the law of karma, cause and effect. We're on week three. Can you believe it? We've been practicing these, these uh, spiritual laws and principles. Uh, this is our third week, which means that now that we have been practicing these principles and laws, we should start to be seeing that they are becoming integrated into who we are. Most people are aware of the fact that it takes 21 days, three weeks, to create a habit. And the fact that we have been giving our, our attention and our focus to a different spiritual law each day, that law is becoming more and more ingrained in who we are. And what we should be noticing right about now is the fact that on different days when the law is not the law of the day, because we have a heightened level of awareness for all of the seven spiritual laws of success, that they are finding their way into our practice on a daily basis. And that is exactly what we're looking to accomplish. That is what's going to help us with our practice of all of these spiritual laws. So today, Law of Karma, all about cause and effect. Whatever we put out there, we're going to get back. Pretty simple. We've got that. This is an ownership and accountability law. This helps us to own. This helps us to uh, shuffle our feet. This helps us to discern whether or not what we're putting out there is yielding the results that we want to yield. And when it's not, we need to shuffle our feet. That's what this law is all about. So now let's incorporate the chakra. The chakra that's associated with the law of karma or cause and effect is the root chakra. And the root chakra is located at the base of the spine. The color of the root chakra is ruby red. So on Tuesdays, when we're practicing the law of karma, cause and effect, we're thinking root chakra. We want to draw our attention down to the base of our spine, and we want to be thinking ruby red. This is the chakra that's associated with this spiritual law and practice, and this is the chakra that we need to keep open so that we can achieve the results that we want to achieve. Now there are elements that are associated, when I think about this chakra, I think about the flexibility that we, that, that's required by us to be able to keep this chakra open and the flexibility that's required of us to be able to achieve our results, right? Again, we put something out there, it doesn't work, what comes back isn't what we desire, we gotta shuffle our feet. That requires flexibility. And when we do that, we have the ability to transform we can experience transformation on high levels because we're constantly evaluating what we're receiving back and making adjustments along the way. That's a beautiful skill to develop and it's a beautiful skill to be able to do unconsciously. Yet we're practicing it consciously at this particular point in time. This is a very uh, an interesting chakra in that I look at it as our foundation. It keeps us stable. It keeps us focused. It helps us to continue to, to keep ourselves steady and centered. So when we're thinking law of karma and we're thinking cause and effect, we should be thinking ruby red, root chakra, transformation. Transformation is possible when we are flexible. And when we're flexible, we will experience more stability and centeredness in our life. That's what today's practice is all about. So now let me give you an example, a couple of examples that I think are beautiful demonstrations of cause and effect. I have a niece who is will be four years old next month. She's like the pride and joy of the family. Uh, I personally have an intention and desire to share with her everything that I have learned uh, to live life, to become the fullest expression of who we are. And I'm sharing all that knowledge with her even though she's so young. I've actually been doing this with her since birth um, because I totally believe the way that I see her is she is a spirit inhabiting a little body and she can connect with what I'm saying and yet she's still trying to figure out her way and operating this little vessel that she's in. So I believe that at the core of who I am. So I'm connecting with that essence of her when I'm sharing all of these different things with her. And the fact is, right now, she only has less than four years of conditioning. So there's a high probability that she's absorbing all of these tools and strategies so that she can become the fullest expression of who she is, whatever that is for her. Now, it was interesting at the, at the Seduction of Spirit retreat, Deepak Chopra talked about kids. And he said that up until the age of three and a half years old, kids mirror everything that's been demonstrated for them. 
Okay, they're not really thinking on their own at this particular point in time. They're just demonstrating what they've seen. And it's so true, right? I mean, they've trained us in essence because children know when they cry that we'll come running. And when they cry, to, to stop them from crying, we'll just give them what they want. So we've actually taught them this, okay, through our own behavior and demonstration of how we responded to them. Well, that's okay. And he also said that by the time they're three and a half, four years old, you know what, they are capable of processing information to treat them like a colleague which I've already said, I've been treating my niece like a colleague since birth. So I've had all these fabulous conversations with her and I know that on some core level, she's connecting with me. Well, one thing that I've noticed about her behavior is that when she gets tired, she gets ornery and sometimes she gets mean. And conceptually, I understand this because she's got all this energy that she doesn't know what to do with. And we, we experience the same thing. Like when we get tired, we get crabby. We just demonstrate our behavior a little bit differently. Uh, an almost four-year-old doesn't demonstrate this behavior, doesn't handle this energy very well. And what she does is she bites and kicks and screams and pinches and scratches. And mostly it's directed at me. Well, this is not okay. This is not okay. You know, if she's going to do this with other people, all right, not that it's desirable behavior for other people. Yet I have to do something about it because it's directed towards me. And I've tried conversation with her. And I'll say, that's not appropriate, you know, it's not nice to hit, you know, it doesn't feel good when you scratch somebody. And she just looks at me, she smiles, and she'll do it again. Like, this is a game to her. I don't think it's funny. And yet she laughs and thinks this is the, the, the greatest thing. So, as a result of this bad behavior, a conversation ensued at my parents' house between my mom and my brother and myself, and we were talking about animals and how we train animals. We have cats. And to teach cats not to go on furniture or not to go on tables or countertops. Um, we use a spray bottle because cats don't like water. So any time that a cat, our cats, would jump on a piece of furniture, we'd shoot them with a water bottle or spray them with a water bottle, and the cat jumps down. And eventually, the cat knows not to jump on the table because it doesn't like the response that it's getting or the, or the, the effect that it's receiving as a result of doing that because they don't get conversation. You can't just say, get down. It doesn't seem to work. Well, I shared a story with uh, with my family about uh, a duck issue that I was having. I have a screened in patio and um, one day I came home and there was a duck sitting on top of my screen and I thought to myself, well, how do I get it down? I'm like, I look at the duck and I go, get down, get down. And the duck's looking at me like, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? And it proceeds to not budge. So I'm thinking, well, that didn't work, and I thought, well, not a big deal. It's not really harming anything, so I don't really care if the duck's up there. Until the next day when I walked out and I was left a gift where the duck crapped on my screen, then I wasn't happy, and I thought, oh, now I got a problem. What am I gonna do? So I'm thinking about it all day long. I come home, and when I get home, there's not one duck. There are two ducks sitting on my screen. And now my mind starts to go, because I'm thinking to myself, wow, I can just hear the conversation between these two ducks. One duck says to the other duck, hey, I got this great place that we can hang out. It's high up in the air. We can see the whole community from a great vantage point, and we have a place to crap. And I'm thinking to myself as this conversation plays in my head, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, like if this is what they're saying to each other, I got a problem. Like it sends me into orbit. So I'm like, I got to do something. So I think, oh. The next time I, I take, I go, I go over to my uh, uh, my hose. I take the hose out and I spray the duck in the in the butt with the hose, and the duck flies away. I'm like, great, it worked! Yay! I was so excited. Until the next day, I came home and the duck was back on my screen. So I'm like, oh my god! So I go, I take the hose, I spray it in the butt. The duck flies away. Next day, I come home. The duck's on the screen. So I'm like, oh my God. So I take the hose, I grab the hose, I start walking with the hose, the duck looks at me, sees me with the hose, and flies away on his own volition before I have an opportunity to spray him. I'm like, wow, it worked. It's like a Pavlovian response. They didn't like the reaction or the effect that they received, they flew away. So after this conversation that we're having at my parents' house, I thought, wow, if it works with animals, maybe it'll work with kids. So my mom goes and gets me a spray bottle and brings it out to me. And my niece says to me, what's that, Aunt Janine? So I said, well, I said, you'll find out the next time that you demonstrate bad behavior. 
which was clearly too much of a challenge for her. She had to know what it was. So she looks at me, she smiles, and she kicks me. So I grab the water bottle, I, I point it at her, and I spray it at her face. And she goes, ah, Aunt Janine, no, no, why did you do that? What is that, Aunt Janine? And I looked and I hold up the water bottle and I said, this is discipline. I don't want discipline, Aunt Janine. I said, you don't have to have discipline. Discipline is the result of bad behavior. When you bite or you kick or you pinch or you scratch or you're mean, you'll get discipline. When you demonstrate good behavior, when you're nice and you're kind and you practice good listening skills and you do what you're asked, no discipline. I said, the choice is yours, you get to decide. Bad behavior, discipline. Good behavior, no discipline. Later, that day we were sitting at the kitchen table and she's looking around. I'm like, she goes, where is it? I go, where's what? She says, the discipline. I said, it's over there. I said, I can get to it really quickly, so the choice is yours. Demonstrate good behavior, no discipline. Bad behavior, I can get to it really quickly, and you'll get discipline. So since then, so far, it's working. It's working. I'll keep you posted. So the, that's my example of cause and effect. So my niece learns cause and effect. So now it's, it, it's in her terms where she can process it and get it so she can decide what she's going to do. I think it's a beautiful example of cause and effect. So that's what I've got for you today. Make it a great day. Practice, be alert, be wise to the results that we are achieving. Ponder in your head, discern for yourself what and how you can change what you're doing to achieve a better result and share what's happening in your world so that we all can benefit. Make it an amazing day and we'll see you tomorrow.